guys, today I'm gonna to be making a sandwich bread that I've made for the first time and it turned out amazing. So I thought I would do it with you guys this time and uh, let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so what we're gonna do first is get out our stand mixer. If you don't have a stand mixer, that's okay. You can still make this recipe. What we're gonna to do to start um, basically proofing is, or um, not proofing, but getting the yeast in there and started is we are going to put in one cup of water, a quarter cup of milk, um, two and a quarter teaspoons of yeast, instant yeast, and two tablespoons of granulated sugar. Um, the water and the milk, we're gonna warm up, so I'm just gonna put it in the same container, warm it up to around 110 degrees Fahrenheit, and then we're gonna put all four ingredients into here and whisk it up and let it sit for how long did we, five minutes. So let's go ahead and get that started. Okay, so that's what it looks like. Now you're going to cover it for five minutes and let it sit. Okay, so now that this is gonna sit for five minutes, what you're gonna do is get um, four tablespoons of unsalted butter at room temperature. So I actually have it here. I've already got it measured out. Um, and then you're gonna get out your bread flour. I use this one here. It's called Creative Baker. It's bread and pizza flour. And I really, really like it. Um, and then other than that, you're going to need salt, and that is it. So let's wait five minutes. Once this is done, um, what we're going to do is we're gonna add in the butter, the salt. So the, the salt um, is one and a half teaspoons of salt. Butter is four tablespoons. And then you're going to add in one cup of flour and you're gonna beat it on low for 30 seconds, scrape down the sides of the bowl Add another cup of flour, beat on medium speed until it's relevantly, um, or relatively incorporated. And it says there may still be chunks of butter, um, but that's okay. And then you're gonna add the remaining flour, which is another cup and a third. So another one and a third cups. So all together you need three and a third cups of bread flour, um, four tablespoons of unsalted butter at room temperature, and then you're gonna need one and a half teaspoons of salt. So once this has sat and proof for five minutes, we will come back and do the next part. Okay, so it's sat for five minutes. You can see that it's bubbled up and it's doing what it's supposed to do. So let's go ahead now and add in the salt, the butter, and one cup of flour. Okay, so now that this is good, we're going to add in the butter, which again is four tablespoons. So add that in. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna have to wash my hand. Um, one and a half teaspoons of salt, and then one cup of butter, or sorry, one cup of flour. So just a second, I'm gonna wash this off and then I'll add the rest. Okay, so we're gonna do the teaspoon and a half of salt and then the one cup of flour and then you can put it on your stand mixer or if you don't have a stand mixer you can just use a wooden spoon and stir it I'm gonna use my paddle to start with. That's how I did it the other day and it worked real well. So I'm just gonna put my paddle on here and I will show you what it looks like. Okay, so turn it on, on low until it mixes in about 30 seconds. And then once it's mixed in here a little bit, you're gonna take a silicone spatula and just scrape the edges down into where all of the, the, um, the dough is. And then we're gonna add another cup of flour. 
and beat on medium speed until it's relatively incorporated. And then we're gonna mix in the remaining cup and a third of flour. And at that time, I put my dough hook on. So that's probably good. Now I'm gonna scrape the sides down. So it's now mixing. I'm gonna turn it up a bit. This is on medium speed with the another cup of flour in. So it's, it's relatively incorporated. Okay, let's stop it and add in the remaining one and a half, or one and a third cups. Okay, so now that's with the last cup and a third cup. I'm just going to start lifting my mixer up. <laughs> I'm going to turn it up a little bit more. So it's going to look like this for a little bit until it's incorporated. Now it says if you need to add more flour, you can add more until it gets into a, uh, a ball and starts to form a ball. So I'm probably going to have to add some more flour, so let me go ahead and do that. Okay, so it says to mix now for five to eight minutes. I'm going to now, I didn't add any more like I just said I was going to. What I'm going to do is I'm going to change the paddle. I'm going to have to do it with another hand to get the dough off. But I'm going to change this paddle to, I'll get it honey, to the dough hook and then we'll keep mixing. Okay, so I'm going to put my dough hook on now and keep mixing for five to eight minutes. And the dough will come together, like it's already peeling off the sides of the bowl. I'll show you what it looks like, because um, it's actually doing good. I don't think I'm gonna need to add any more. It's supposed to be a little bit sticky, but it says if you do find that it's too sticky and it's not pulling away from the walls after five to eight minutes, you just add a teaspoon of flour at a time. So let me turn you around now and show you what it looks like. Um, I think it's perfect. So let's see. Okay, see how it's pulled away from the walls now with the dough hook on? It's actually really, really nice. So I'm gonna um, knead it here for another probably three or four minutes and then uh, I will show you the next steps. Okay, so the dough is in a ball. Now what we're going to do, do is we're going to grab a large bowl. Um, I'll show you the one I like here. This one. <laughs> And I've got tons of other bowls inside of it. But what you're gonna do is grab a large bowl like that one there. And you're just gonna put some oil inside of it. And I just use a brush and pull it up the sides of the bowl. You're gonna take your dough ball and put it inside the bowl and turn it so the ball of dough is also coated in oil. And then you're simply just gonna wrap it and we're gonna let this rise until it doubles in size for roughly about two hours. So let's go ahead now and oil this and then we'll put the, the dough into the bowl. Okay, so you can see that's what it looks like. I've turned it so it's coated in oil. You can see the sides have oil all the way up them. Now I'm just gonna cover this with Saran and we are going to see here. First rise, put it in a relatively warm environment for one to two hours or until doubled in size. So let's go ahead and do that. It says usually takes two hours if you're just gonna leave it on your um, kitchen um, countertop and that's what we're gonna do. So let's go ahead and cover it. Okay, so it's covered. I'm just gonna move it over to here. 
and put it here. This is the loaf, actually, the same one. <laughs> I'm just gonna make another one here. So I'm gonna leave it here and we will come revisit it in two hours and I'll show you what it looks like. Okay, so it's been about two hours. You can see that it's clearly doubled in size. So let's go ahead and move on to the second rise. Okay, so I've got it back over here now. The saran is off. You're gonna flour your work surface and then you're gonna get a nine by, what is this, a nine by 10? Let me see here. Okay, sorry, not a nine by 10, a nine by five loaf pan and I just greased it. You can do whatever you want to grease it. And then you're gonna have a rolling pin and we're going to go ahead and get this punched down and put onto our floured surface. Okay, so I'm gonna just roll my sleeves up here. So what you're going to do is you're gonna have your pan greased, you're gonna have your work surface greased, and now we're basically gonna shape the bread. So when the dough is ready, you're gonna punch it down to release the air, lightly flour a work surface, your hands, and a rolling pin. And then we're gonna roll the dough out into a large rectangle, about eight by 15 inches. It does not have to look perfect. It probably won't. And then we're gonna roll it up into an inch long, or an eight inch log. Um, and then we're going to put it into the loaf pan and let it rise for the second time. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay, so you can see that we have the log here. Might be a bit bigger than eight inches, a little bit. So now what you're gonna do is you're gonna take your greased pan and you're simply just going to put it down <clears throat> into here like this. So it looks like this, and then we're going to cover it either with saran tin foil or just a kitchen towel. I'm gonna to use saran again, and then we're gonna let it rest for another hour or until it's about an inch above the edge of the pan. So it's about that high. So let's go ahead and get this uh, covered. Okay, so there it is. It's covered up. I'm simply going to bring it back over here and set it here and we will let it rise the second time. And I'll show you what it looks like here in about an hour or once it's up over the edge a bit. Okay, so that was quite an interruption. Um, I had to go to the hospital, <laughs> so this got out of hand, um, but we're home, everything's good. We had a little bit of a scare with my daughter. She's okay. She just has strep throat, but anyways, back to the recipe. So I will show you, I told my husband quickly, can you just put it in the fridge so it doesn't get any warmer and rise anymore? And he did, I just got home and grabbed it out i preheating the oven now to, I believe it's 350, yes, 350, and we're going to bake it for 30 to 34 minutes. So let me show you what it looks like. So it's obviously risen more than an inch above, but it's okay, it's not uh, crazy here. Hopefully it uh, turns out great. <laughs> Oh, sorry, I'm getting a little close there. So this is what it looks like all the way around. I'm going to um, let the oven preheat to 350 and then we will put it in the oven. Okay, so we've got it going in and you're gonna wanna cook this on the bottom rack as close to the bottom of the oven and then push it back into the center and I'll show you what it looks like as it cooks. Okay, so I just set the timer for 30 minutes. Um, what you're going to do is you're going to um, bake it for 30 to 34 minutes until golden brown on top. If you notice that it's browning too quickly, just grab some tin foil and tent it and lay it over top of your bread. 
so it doesn't get too dark of a crust. If you like a dark crust, leave it. Um, but as it cooks, I'll let you see what it looks like and uh, we'll go from there. Okay, so I've got about five minutes left. This is what it's looking like. It's not too dark, so it's doing good. I'll show you what it looks like here in five minutes. Okay, and it is done. So I'm gonna take it out and I'll give you a peek. Okay, so here is the loaf. Really nice. Now, normally if I would have done it where I didn't have to go to the hospital in the middle of it, this end piece, how it's hanging over, ooh, that is hot, would not have happened, but it looks really good. So I'm just gonna let it sit now for probably 15, 20 minutes, and then I'll take it out and put it on a cooling rack and I'll, I'll show you what it looks like and then we'll slice it up and I'll show you what the slices look like. Okay, so I've taken it out of the pan and, or the loaf pan and it looks amazing. Now, I will say it got a little messed up and a little too um, full when, for the second rise just because of the time frame and everything. Um, so yeah, I'm just gonna let it sit now for a bit till it completely cools. As you can see here, it's got its uh, bubble. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I'm gonna slice it up and I'll show you what it looks like. Okay. <laughs> So it's being a little bit of a bugger to cut. As you can see though, the inside is very nice. Um, it may be a little warm still. Let me show you what a piece looks like here. So there is your piece of loaf. Now, I know for a fact that this just rose too much before I baked it and God's will is that's what this was supposed to be because I didn't plan on leaving in the middle of it to go anywhere, which I did, but I will show you this loaf that I actually, it's the exact same recipe that I made about three days ago, and I'll show you how this one sliced up. So this is perfect. Um, really really good but yeah it turned out really good um, it's very light I like making bread in the bread maker because you literally put your ingredients in it and you walk away but it is I find bread maker bread is very dense and heavy it's a very heavy bread this is very very light and fluffy as you can see the top of it, it had some bubbles. Like you can see that it's like squished down here. And that's okay, it literally looks like store-bought bread, right? But it's very, you, you can even see that it's got like the, the holes in it like store-bought bread. Um, but yeah, it turned out really, really good. And uh, I really, really like this recipe. So yeah, there you go. That is how you make this recipe for sandwich bread loaf. I will put the recipe to this exact one down below in the description. What I personally love about making my own bread is there's no additives, there's no preservatives in it. It's literally like five ingredients. <laughs> Once again, what we had in here was water, milk, yeast, sugar, butter, and um, salt, and then your bread flour. So you don't have all the preservatives and the additives, and it's simple ingredients. You know what you're eating, and uh, that's very important to me as a mom and our family. So give this bread recipe a try i'll put the recipe the exact one that i use down below in the description it turned out once again i'll show you really really good 
Um, and even my son said the other day when he was eating the other loaf, he said, Mom, this is really good. And I said, it is, isn't it? It's not so heavy. And even for a toast, it's just a really good bread. So anyways, give it a try. If you do give it a try, come back and leave a comment for how it turned out for you. Hopefully nothing <laughs> happens in your second rise and uh, you can let it rise per, um, you know, perfectly. But you know what? It's good. It's totally good. So give it a try. Let me know what you think. If you have your own favorite sandwich loaf recipe, please drop it below. I love trying new things. Um, give this recipe a thumbs up, like this video. And as always, subscribe, ring that bell so you never miss one of my videos. And I love you all from the bottom of my heart. Thank you so much for following along. I am going to enjoy the rest of my day and I will see you guys all next time. Bye.